morning, Michelle Arnott here at Diamond Rock Glass Studio. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm very excited about today's pattern um, from Judy McMillan. You can find all of Judy's patterns at glassartdesignllc.com. I was so excited when I saw that she had drawn out this pattern. It is the Windmill Ice Cream Shop here in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. It's just north of town and it's nearby where I live, about a block from where I live. So um, I pass it every day to work and every day that when I go home, I pass it and I do stop there quite often. And they're only open during the summer and we have short summers. So we really take advantage of the ice cream shop when it's open and it's an uh, iconic place. Um, they have been serving for decades and people come from everywhere to get their ice cream and their portions are huge. So I was super excited to um, see that Judy had drawn out the pattern for the windmill ice cream shop. I hope you enjoy it. Um, some of the things I'm going to talk about today are just a few tips if you're working with a larger project. This project is about two by two feet uh, large and it's got almost 200 pieces. So there's some tips and tricks if you're working with a larger piece to make your life a little bit easier. And the other thing is I will be doing some wire detail. I also wanna show you um, what paint was used to paint on the ice cream in the center of the windmill. So let's get started. one and this works for me if you're working on a large project and you have a lot a lot of pieces I try to uh, trace them out all at once and then you can see as I'm using a cutter I make multiple score lines and then I pick up my running pliers or grossing pliers and so my alternation of use of each tool is less so you can make multiple scores and then multiple um, breaks with your grossing pliers or your running pliers. That's not how I teach in my class, but it is okay even if you're kind of a beginner. See, you can do multiple scores, but try to follow the order of your scores and then your breaks. Number two is the tool that you see me holding in my right hand. It's called a grinder's mate. If you have a lot of pieces to be grinding, it is very helpful to have um, something to help you hold on to those sharp glass pieces. So I'm guiding it with my left hand, um, but it comes in real handy and um, it'll really save on your fingertips.
my third tip is if you decide to use some very difficult to cut glass, maybe keep that minimal. This glass, for example, was a piece of glass that I had inherited. Um, it's not something that I picked out, but it's really, really pretty, but it was really difficult to cut. Um, I could make a score line it, and the break would not follow the score line. So I actually had to change the pattern. I actually broke six pieces of glass. Um, I am gonna show you a little trick um, to try to make sure that your score line will break on the score line, which is um, by using your um, two pairs of grossing pliers. It was actually very frustrating because I had about a square foot of glass and like I said, I broke about six pieces of glass. I would recommend if you're doing a really large project, uh, make sure that the glass you're using um, is, you know, workable. See here, now I'm using the two pairs of grossing pliers and I do this a lot to finish up this ground glass. Um, so that is a good way, um, but it, it takes more time. And if you're doing a really big project, unless you're more patient than I am, um, you would like to at least combine some difficult to cut glass with some pretty easy to cut glass, which most of the rest of the glass for this piece um, was pretty easy. And my fifth and final tip for today is to use a good tracing marker. So I used a Pilot Gold Marker. It's an extra fine point paint marker. You can find this on my website. But what you want is a marker that's gonna stay on until you take it off with something that takes off permanent marker. You want it to last through all the grinding because you wanna trace your pattern piece and then you want your grinder to grind off your marks with your marker. Um, and you want the numbers to stay on until you're ready to take them off. So you can wash all your pieces all at once and put them back where they belong. So I got all the soldering done on the front and on the back. So the next step I'm gonna do is add the 18 gauge wire to the windows and to the paddles and to the stairs. So if you order this from Judy, you will see with the dotted lines where the wire detail is in the windows and also on the stairs and on the paddles. You can also see that I have not added the center piece to the windmill that says ice cream. This part, um, normally I don't do until my entire piece is finished and patina and waxed. That's the very last thing that I do. However, I was having some trouble. I wanted to make sure the ice cream was painted on there really, really nicely and I was having trouble with it. So I brought it down to the end of the block here uh, to Sherry's Sweet Sensation. Sherry does amazing um, she's our local baker and she does amazing lettering on her cakes and everything. So I brought it to her and I brought um, her the paint. And the paint that I brought to her is something that you can order off of Amazon. Um, the paints I have look like this. Um, I didn't see these on Amazon right now, but you can see um, it says glass paint and on Amazon right now they do have something similar. It just says glass paint. It can also uh, paint on porcelain um, and some other um, different types of surfaces, I think. So that's gonna go in very, very last, but first I'm gonna get the wire detail done with the 18 gauge wire here. So I'm just using some wire cutters. So that's the part I'll do next, and then I'll wash and patina everything and wax, and then carefully insert that center. So I'm fast forwarding through the stairs that I'm doing here. I just cut the basic length I need for each piece of the stairs, and then I start tacking it down. You can tack down on a couple of the seams, and then the rungs that go up, I'm just attaching to the top of the rail of the stairs. I'm just following the diagram on Judy's pattern and trimming the wire as needed as I go. I am very carefully placing that center ice cream painted on center 
and I'm speeding it up a little bit. I was just really, really careful with putting the flux on and now the soldering, and I'm gonna be very careful with cleaning it up and then the patina. And then to get the back, I hoisted the piece up onto four rolls of paper towel. I used Quick Clean Spot Cleaner for the flux and a Q-tip to apply the patina. Thank you again for watching. If you are new to stained glass or need a refresher, please feel free to go back to my very first video, How to Make a Sun Catcher. It's about 55 minutes long and it does detail in, uh, in detail the whole process of the stained glass uh, process. So from picking out your pattern to picking out your glass to cutting, grinding, foiling, soldering, and finally finishing your piece. So um, thanks again for joining me and I'll see you next time.